In this series, In the Potter's Hands, we've discovered that God forms us and reforms us. He creates us and he saves us. He calls us to grow more like him, to live a form life. We discovered that there were certain biblical principles that we could use to help us grow, to be formed by God. Last time we looked at how we learn to hear the voice of God by meditating on his word, the scriptures. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at how we grow for a lifelong and life-changing conversation. Yes, this video will look at prayer, or as one author describes it, the breath of the soul. Prayer is obviously important. All who have walked with God have viewed it as the main business of their life. Very early in the morning, Jesus got up and went to a place where he could be alone and pray. David's desire for prayer served as an alarm clock. O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee. The apostles in the early church didn't let them get sidetracked. Instead, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and serving the word. Martin Luther used to say, I've so much business, but I can't get on without spending three hours a day in prayer. And John Wesley used to say, God does nothing but an answer to prayer. But what does the life of prayer actually look like? Well, unfortunately, many Christians struggle with prayer. And that's often because of how they understand it. And sadly, some of these popular ideas cause too many people to give up on something that has the power to really change their lives. Unfortunately, many Christians view prayer simply about changing outcomes. It's about making something happen. It's about changing God's mind about something. It's the Christian version of a letter to Santa Claus. We ask for something and we hope we get it because we've been good. And because of this, we try to find ways to game the system. We try to find ways to swing it in our favour. And so sometimes prayer and prayer ministries become a search for the key to God's goody safe. If only we try hard enough, if only we try the right way, we'll get what we want. And then when it doesn't work, we give up on this idea of prayer. Or we feel guilty because we think there must be something wrong with us if God doesn't answer our prayers and give us what we want. Or maybe we just feel like prayer is just talking to the ceiling. So if prayer is not about changing outcomes, what is it about? Maybe we're just overthinking it. There's a lovely quote from Ella White that says this, Prayer is the breath of the soul. It's the secret of spiritual power. No other means of grace can be substituted and the health of the soul be preserved. Prayer brings the heart into immediate contact with the wellspring of life. You don't have to think about breathing. It's simply part of life. And in the same way, our prayer life should be as natural as that life-giving breathing. The heart of prayer is that it brings us into a connection with God. Prayer is simply talking to God as you talk to a friend. Prayer is relational. Prayer is simply a conversation with God. Now prayer is vital because it leads us into perpetual communion with our Heavenly Father. And the closer we come to the heartbeat of God, the more we see our need and the more we desire to be conformed to Christ. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your passions. So if that's asking wrongly, what's rightly? Well, it involves transformed passions in prayer, real prayer we begin to think God's thoughts after him, to desire the things he desires, to love the things he loves, to will the things he wills. 
we learn to see things from his point of view. So to pray is to change, but it doesn't change God, it changes us. Prayer is the central avenue God uses to transform us. Prayer puts us in the potter's hands. Not only does prayer put us there in the potter's hands, but as he forms us, as he changes us, we become part of God's story. We become co-workers with God. And our prayers, our conversations with God, allows him to use us as his instruments in answering prayer. What an amazing relationship we can have with God. Strengthened and grown through prayer. Living a formed life. The purpose of this sermon series, the series of videos, is to help us grow as Christians. It's to put us in the potter's hands, to live lives formed by God. So we want to be practical, which is why you might find there's not as much um, scripture in this as in most of our sermons, because we're looking more at the practical day-to-day -day effect this has in our lives. So I'm going to suggest four different approaches today that you might like to try in your prayer life. One is a little bit more traditional. One uses the Bible to help make prayer a conversation with God. One uses your mobile phone to help you pray. And one is a great way to end each day in the presence of God. So try them. See if they help you grow closer to God and grow in him. Now you may be a little bit more traditional. You may find that your prayers are more of an outward expression of your heart's desires and needs. Maybe you're more used to seeing prayer timers talking to God. Now obviously I hope you're finding room to listen too, but if this is your approach, let me suggest a few things that you may have forgotten or maybe don't pray about often. Because very often prayer can sound like a spiritual shopping list. So remember to try and include some of these topics in your prayers to avoid that. And you'll also find this is suitable and helpful maybe when you're praying corporately. So I'm going to suggest some topics to cover. Praise. This is where we acknowledge who God is. This is where we recognise all that he is and all that he does. Confess. As Protestants, we like to point out that we can confess directly to God and we don't need the intercession of a priest or a confessor. But how often do we actually do this, both individually and corporately as a church? So include it in your prayer time. Intercede. This is where we pray for and on behalf of others. It's a reminder it's not just me and God, we're part of a wider community. Expel. This is where we ask God to change us, to remove parts of our lives that don't honour or glorify him. Thank. We give thanks to God for his good gifts. We thank him for his grace, his provision and his protection. Heal. We ask God to restore us. We ask for relationships, bodies and all that's broken in this world to be fixed. Grieve. We acknowledge the hurt and pain caused by sin and suffering in this world. We cry out, why Lord? How long Lord? We stand with those that mourn, claiming God's promises. Love. We express our love for God and God's love for each other. Go and do. We ask God to use us to answer our prayers. We ask God to show us how to be his hands and feet. We say, here I am, send me. Now that's not an exhaustive list, but I hope it will help you broaden our prayers. Prayer is a conversation with God. So, we sit, we kneel, we praise him, we thank him, we confess our sins, uh, we pray for others. But is this the conversation? What's missing? Listening. How do we listen? How do we listen to God? Well, God can inspire us through the words of another person, through the beauty of nature, 
through significant experiences in life, but most of all through scripture. And it's the Bible, the word of God, that we use to primarily hear God speak to us. And this, I hope, is where you see the connections between our, ser- our last sermon on meditating in God's word. So this is how we pray with the Bible. Now, it's not a Bible study, because a Bible study is something we do to increase our understanding of God's ways with humanity. Prayer with the Bible is something God does, inspiring us, touching our hearts and healing our hurts through his word. So I hope you tried this method of meditative Bible reading, but we're going to look at it now and see how we can also use it to further our prayer life. And we're going to talk about how we prepare for prayer, what we do during prayer, and what we do after prayer. Okay, so how do we pray with the Bible? First of all, give yourself some time. I recommend you start off about half an hour. Maybe set a timer. Choose a suitable place. Switch off your phone, get rid of any distractions if you can, and get comfortable. I mean, kneeling is good, but it's not always comfortable after a few minutes. Maybe you stand up a bit because you're going to be sitting down for a while. Then give God the time. Persevere with this. Time is a gift to God. And we'll look at that in another part of our series. So don't snatch it back once you give it to him. God never wastes a minute. So even if you feel empty, God is doing something in your life. So if you're using a timer, just sit there. Sit with God until it beeps. So pick a passage. Now the Gospels are great for this, but reach out to me if you like and I'll send you some suggestions covering all aspects of topics about our relationship with God. So now how do we pray with the Bible? Take a minute, a minute or two to remind yourselves that you are in the presence of God. Offer the time of prayer to God. Ask him to help you listen well. Ask him to help you to be open to what he might be saying to you. Open the Bible. Now, I love my Bible app, but uh, a page works better for this because there's less distractions and it's easier to linger on words. Read the passage very slowly. And as you read the words, the phrases, notice any reactions that you have, any emotions or responses that you might have. Notice what words or phrases trigger the reaction. If you don't seem to hear anything or anything speak to you, ask God why you're not hearing from him. Trust God to give you the experience you need. So whenever you notice a reaction or uh, uh, or, or something that speaks to you, pause. Reflect on the words that God has inspired. And then talk to God about it, just as you would of a friend. Ask him what he's saying to you through this text. Have this conversation with God through the Bible. Now, not every part may speak to you. Something may be confusing or difficult to understand. But remember, this isn't a Bible study, so if something is difficult, put a mental pin in it, put it to one side, and come back to it later with those questions. If something disturbs you, ask God to show you why you're finding it disturbing. Ask if there's anything he's trying to teach you through it. This is prayer, not a race, so don't think you have to finish your passage in that time you set aside for God. If you're having this conversation with God just on the first part, well, that's okay. All that matters is that you savour as much of this passage and that you read it as fully as possible. Maintain your focus on God and his presence. At the end of that half an hour, or whatever your times you set, thank God for whatever experience you've had. After your time of prayer, be aware that God will continue to talk to you throughout the day. You may find your mind going back to that passage. You you may find uh, that conversation with God continuing throughout the day. and So it might be worth taking five minutes some point during the day to reflect on it. If journaling's your thing, write it down. And then keep doing it. Because relationships take more than just one conversation. Do you have a mobile phone? Well, of course you do. I only know one person who doesn't, that's my dad. But anyway, do you often find yourself just scrolling through it aimlessly? Probably, if you're like me. How much time do you spend just vegging out on the screen? 
Well, we're now going to use our mobile phones to help us pray. This is a great way of praying without ceasing and integrating our phone for good into our lives. I came across this uh, idea about a year ago and I found it a really good tool when I'm worried that I'm wasting too much time on my phone. Go to your home screen. What's your screen background? Is it a picture of a loved one? A spouse? A child? Is it a beautiful landscape? Some abstract art? Maybe it's just a blue screen. Take a moment to thank God for what is in the picture or to thank God by what it reminds you of. Now open up your calendar. Think about the appointments you have coming up. Think about the people you'll meet. Your friends, your family, your colleagues. Maybe you've got deadlines coming up. Maybe there are projects to complete, events to prepare for. Take a moment to hand these things over to God for his safekeeping. Now go to your contacts. Pick a letter. If you do this regularly, you can scroll through it. Find the first name. It might be someone you know very well. Someone you hardly know. An organisation. Take a moment to pray for that person or that organisation. Do you have a news app? Open it. If not, go to whichever news website. Look at the headlines. Find one that strikes you. Take a moment to read the first paragraph of the story and then lift it to prayer before God. Okay, now go to your photo stream. Swipe through your images until one catches your eye. Think about the person, the place or the object. Take a moment to pray to God about it or them or what it reminds you of. Check the time on the front of your phone. Take a moment to think about how you're using your time. How do you prioritise it? Have a look at your battery life. Is it low or full? Take a moment to pray for those with the low energy, people you know who are struggling with issues of physical or mental health. Does your phone have a torch? Put it on and shine the light. Pray for God's light in the dark places. Now go to whichever social media uh, you prefer. Think of the first person you notice. Pray for them and what they are facing today, whatever it is. Now put your phone back in your pocket. <laughs> this is just simply another way of keeping a conversation going throughout the day with God. It's another way of praying without ceasing. It's a way of involving God in the fabric of our lives. So get into the habit of allowing prayer to become part of your day. Now we come to the end of the day. So why not have a conversation with God about your day, how it went, what you've learned about yourself and your need of God. So I'm going to share something with you. It's a two-way conversation with God again and it's uh, five steps. The first step is give thanks. Begin by giving God thanks for all that you're grateful for in that day. Let your mind wander with God and reflect on the way that he's blessed you today. Include both the big things and the small things, from the gift of faith and family to maybe an easy journey and a parking space that appeared. Now, ask for God's spirit because we're going to look at the moments in the day that didn't go so well. Now you know, as humans, we're not very good at this. We, we either hide in denial or we wallow in self-pity. We seethe in self-loathing or get trapped by guilt. We don't want to do that right now. So we start by asking God to fill us with his spirit and for the Holy Spirit to lead us through this moment of self-reflection and soul searching. So now we review and we recognise our failures. We Look back over the day and we ask God to point out the moments that I have failed in big ways or small moments. Be honest with yourself here. 
We do this not to keep us up all night, but to leave them in the hands of a gracious God who's ready to forgive. Now we seek forgiveness and healing. If we've sinned, we ask God for his forgiveness and ask him to set us straight again. If something was just a mistake, not a sin, we ask God to heal any harm that our actions may have done, either to us or to others. We ask God to help us get over our failures and to move on. We ask for wisdom to discern how to better handle difficult moments in the future. Then we take a moment to pray about the next day. We ask God to, you know, to show us how tomorrow might go. Imagine the things you'll be doing, the people you'll be meeting, the decisions you'll be mulling over. Ask God to help you with any moments that you face that may be difficult. Ask for help in moments when you might be tempted to fail in ways that you did today. And that's a really nice way of just finishing your day, reflecting on it in a conversation with God. Now you'll have noted these prayer methods tie in with our biblical meditation we looked at previously. And I, and I hope you're going to begin to see how they may come together, the idea of rhythms and patterns in our life. You know, and we'll look at that in another, uh, in another video. But for now, maybe start your day with a biblical meditation uh, and prayer. And then pray with scripture. And pause in the middle of the day maybe and do the phone prayer. And then at the end of the day, maybe work through this reflective prayer. And you'll start to develop rhythms and patterns. I hope this video has made you rethink the purpose and importance of prayer for Christian growth. I hope that you've not just learned something though, I hope that you'll put into practice something today. That you'll experience a newer and deeper conversation with God. I hope that you might try some of these different prayer methods. I pray that God uses prayer to change us. So let's learn to breathe. Let's experience a life-changing conversation with God. Let's live a prayer form life. May you experience a lifelong, life-changing conversation with God the Father. And may you be formed by the Spirit into the likeness of his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.